Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Just a, uh, a quick reminder that in the bulletin there is this attendance card. If you would give us uh, a record of your attendance here this morning, we'd appreciate that very much. Also on the back, there is a space for your prayer requests. So uh, please uh, place, uh, place any of those on there. Um, in the future, we will have a, some kind of way to demarcate whether you want that in the bulletin or just to keep someone praying for it, but we haven't done that yet. But if, if you feel strongly about it being in the bulletin, um, please put that on here. Um, I guess now that I'm now that I'm talking about it, I guess I'll just mention it now instead of save it for the prayer time. Um, some of you may um, have seen um, the podcast that I used to do on Monday nights, and there was a guy who was always with me named Mark. Um, his wife Regina is. Um, dealing with some, uh, some kidney issues and is in dialysis and had to go to the hospital. So if you could keep Regina in your prayers as well, that would be great. Good morning. So your bulletin's filled with lots of newsy items. I've been asked to draw your attention to a couple of them. Um, on page nine, um, the one great hour of sharing is going on through the end of the month. And there's some online opportunities to give, as well as um, in, in the regular collection. And then our very own Kathy Wilson illustrated a book. And she is going to be talking about it on April 21st. So bring $10 with you then, and hang out after and hear about her book. So, and read the rest of the bulletin, including all the music and more stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening. So, welcome. May you find God's love, peace, grace, and joy as we worship today. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. When the disciples were certain that Jesus was dead, he stood among them and, and said, Peace be with you. Let us watch for the risen Christ this day, bursting in with new life and new hope. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We turn to page 618 for our opening hymn. Thank you. Yeah. 
Much of church history, an emphasis has been placed on the way Jesus' life, death, and resurrection frees us from our captivity to sin. At the same time, the authors of the New Testament continually stress a different side of the same coin. Yes, Jesus came to free the world from captivity to sin. Even more, Jesus lived, died, and was raised to demonstrate that by the Spirit, we have been freed for a life of imitation of his way in the world. Trusting in the God who seeks to liberate us, let us confess the ways that we have barely begun to embrace the vocation we have been liberated to embody. What love you have given us, O oh God, that we should be called your children. What love you have given us, O oh Christ, that we should share a table with you. Forgive us when we act as if we were your only children when we do not recognize your image in the faces of strangers, enemies, or friends, when we do not share our own tables, forgetting that we need each other. Forgive us, O Christ, maker of peace, and teach us to follow in your own. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God has made us the blessed community of the church, let us greet one another in whatever way we can with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you. Also with you. We're on to the prayer of illumination. 
Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Quiet our minds and calm our spirits. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we more fully become bearers of your good news, eternal and abundant, and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. In your pew Bible on page 240. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. So I think, I guess maybe just, I had some fun following uh, Peter throughout uh, Lent and into Easter. So, um, I decided that what we should do is follow Peter a little bit longer. Keep, uh, keep with him post-resurrection, um, post, uh, post-Easter, uh, on into Pentecost. It will require us to uh, think of time a little more circularly than linear, um, because clearly in, the, in Acts and the different stories that we're reading, the first thing that happens is Pentecost. Uh, which we won't get to for another five weeks or so. <laughs> so um, we'll have to come back to that, uh, but we're going to read ahead uh, after that. So just remember that Pentecost has happened as we're, as we're reading these things. <laughs> uh, but we are going to start by looking at this uh, story in Acts 3. With Peter and John. And I think... If we stop a little early, you can keep reading into the, all the verses that are here, but, you know, we only got so much time. So, chapter 3, it's on page 120. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John go, about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. May the Lord grant us hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The first thing that I kind of want to just get out of the way about, <laughs> about, this, about this text and about what we will talk about going forward for the next four or five weeks is what we already mentioned in the prayer of confession that however you understand what Jesus 
did when Jesus came and lived on earth and died and was resurrected. However you understand that, the purpose of it was so that we could be liberated to be people who live out as much of a life similar to Jesus as we can here on earth now. That we can find ways to liberate, heal, make whole the people around us. And there is a some interesting moments in this story that offer small little lessons. I think the first one is the look, right? They come and the man kind of, you can imagine that he's just kind of holding the bowl up, just kind of turning his eyes away. And they say, look at us. Now, what they might be saying is, Look how we're dressed. Do you think we've got alms? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they, exactly. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a lot of money themselves, so you know, they might, might have just been saying, hey, why are you asking us for alms? But I don't think that was the point. The point was to be in relationship, to see each other, to be seen. They want him to look at them so that they can look back at him. Part of what is important for us as people who seek to follow Jesus, who seek to be people who imitate Jesus like Peter tried to do, is to actually look the need, the suffering, the hurting of people and of this world in the face. To be willing to see it and be seen. To be in relationship, face to face. The other thing that I might, I'm being reassured that I can talk about this in the past, so you know, we're going to take some some uh, some gentle steps here. But uh, the part that really stuck out to me this week was when he says, "Silver and gold we have not, but what we have we give to you." And I started to think about. what it means for us in our world, in our day-to-day, to try to bring healing to people who are hurting. And we must confess that in our nation in particular, probably one of the only ones in the developed world like this, um, that our interactions with healing all have to do with silver and gold, or money, we call it now. If you have it, and maybe a lot of it, you can get good care. You can find healing. If you don't have it, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. And it made me think of, no one's cleared me to talk about this yet. I mean, it's, that, that part, I've been, you know, I've been okay a couple times, but um, we haven't gone this far yet. Um, it made me think of, of this book. Um, it's called Decolonizing Theology and Revolution, and it's about Cuba. And the only reason that I uh, came across it is because the author is one Ari Fernandez Albon who is the Ari, who has stood before us and preached um, just earlier this year or last year. I can't remember when it was. It was not too long ago. 
But he wrote this book, and it is about um, the former president of the seminary where he teaches now, that's in Matanzas, that people who visited there have, have seen that seminary. And this former president, um, his name is Sergio Arce. He's a, he was a theologian back in the, back in the 60s and 70s. Um, now, and he was alive during the 50s um, in Cuba. Some of you know what that means. <laughs> um, but one of his arguments was that the Protestant church, at least, the church that he was a part of, the Presbyterian church in Cuba, could not just flatly condemn the revolution because it was atheist. They couldn't just say, we condemn you because you're atheist. His argument was, let's look at what they're doing, what they're providing for people, how they're interacting face to face with people, and evaluate whether they're the atheist or we're the atheist, or that we have chased after an idol that is not really the true God who calls us to be people who act like these people are acting in terms of health care, education, and providing for one another. And it raises some very interesting questions for us as people in this country, not just about how we have made their lives miserable for 70 years or so, but about how we understand what it means for us to be people who try to witness to Jesus and his life in a place where the simplest, simplest preventative, the simplest procedural things that might bring healing and hope and health to people are completely dependent on the profit of some, on the wealth of some. It clearly isn't working. And as again, most other countries around the world would tell you that there's a better way. Not a perfect way, a better way. <laughs> that actually thinks of the people and what they need over the profit of certain companies and industries. Have we have we as people who claim the name of Jesus, the legacy of Jesus, have we turned our faith from our role, our vocation, as people meant to bring healing to this world? That is our question. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we know not everyone, not everyone is healed. We know of people right now who are suffering and hurting. We know of those experiencing pain and loss. And we know in the face of all of the influence and money and power of the people who profit from this system that we are just small voices. We seek to 
to follow your way. We seek to look the problems of this world, the pain of this world in the face. We seek to be in relationship with those who need your healing. We seek your guidance. We seek to be filled with your compassion and love. Lead us and guide us along your way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you would remain standing, uh, we will affirm our faith using uh, an adaptation from part of the Confession of 1967. New life in Christ takes shape in a community in which people know that God loves and accepts them, just as they are, and sometimes even in spite of what they have become. We therefore accept ourselves and love others, knowing that no one has any ground on which to stand except God's grace. Amen. You may be seated. Just a, uh, a quick reminder that uh, there, are, there is an attendance card in your bulletin if you would give us uh, a record of your presence. Um, if you are visiting with us, we'd love an email address or mailing address so we can thank you um, for visiting with us. We'd appreciate that. Uh, and uh, welcome all you out there watching along now or, or later on. This is our opportunity and our chance uh, out of Gratitude for all that God has blessed us with to return a portion with our morning offering. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more holy in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my
Um, I just so I just thought uh, before we go to prayer, um, I was just going to open it up if anybody had anyone that they wanted to mention or any joys or concerns. Um, just really throwing you off your game today, aren't I? Um, okay. Keep Greg in your prayers. And it's Craig's family. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, so I'll, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll repeat. So um, Vi's brother-in-law has been, has been uh, diagnosed with multiple stage myeloma, and um, they are um, distant, distant members of this church. They uh, attend visu- visually <laughs> um, uh, every, every Sunday, and they, they even uh, send us a, a little, little tithe along the way. So, um, so keep them in your prayers um, for sure. And, uh, if you're watching, we're praying for you out there. Yeah, Jerry. All right, new great granddaughter. All right, good. Enjoy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yes, Sue. Yes. Yeah. Pray for Sue's husband, who's in poor health. Yeah, Pam. Okay, Gary Reitzman, who's uh, uh, John and Pat's nephew. Fighting pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic, fighting pancreatic cancer. <laughs> Just, okay, I'm, I'm going to refrain from going into a long thing, but if you would just, mostly I think, Pray for wisdom for um, our leaders. Um, pray for, um, I don't know, maybe some kind of like holy something for our news media. I don't know, some kind of coming to Jesus, you know, waking up to reality kind of thing. I don't know, that would help some. Uh, pray for those who... Um, Pray for those we know and love and any others who are being, you know, potentially deployed um, over there or find themselves in harm's way. Um, And just be in prayer. Be in prayer for peace. Um, You know. uh, Yeah, I won't go. If you want to have a conversation, (laughs) I'm happy to have a conversation sometime, but this is not the time or place. Um, but let us, uh, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together as your family. This one little instance here in this town, this one little place, we thank you for the ways that you have been faithful to the people of this place from generation to generation. We ask that... Um, with all the names that we have lifted up, the names that are in our bulletin, who we continually pray for, the people that we have kept close to our hearts and maybe not mentioned this morning, all those places where we are facing the struggles of this life, the pain of this world, the need for healing and hope. We ask, first of all, for you to be present Remind us of your presence in whatever way is possible. Bring healing for those of us who are caring for these um, that we've mentioned. Give us us compassion. Give us patience. Grant us comfort. Keep us by your Spirit ever vigilant 
in our vocation of bringing health, liberation, and wholeness to your world, starting with the people close to us. We need your spirit. We need your presence. We rejoice with those who are rejoicing. We thank you for the signs of spring, turning of the weather, chance to be out, enjoy your creation. We pray for peace. We pray for your shalom. We pray that you will make us people who not only have a faint wish and desire to see your peace, but who are willing to become peacemakers, ready to work, to call out, to cry out where needed. Thank you again for your presence here with us, your love for us, how deep, how broad, how high. Thank you for hearing us as we pray. Hear us again as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Now may the love of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the very peace, presence, and love of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 